I'm going to show you some pictures of objects and I want you to see if you can figure out what they have in common. So we have toothpaste, a computer, a baseball bat, a diamond ring, deodorant, a watch, paint, a pencil, a cell phone, glass, chalk, salt, and coins. What do they all have in common? Well, you may be thinking they don't have much in common. They actually do though, because they're actually all made of minerals. Minerals come in many different shapes and colors and sizes. By the time you finish watching this video, your goal is to be able to describe what makes something a mineral. So minerals are important for a few reasons. Obviously we use them. We use them in all those objects we just looked at. But they're also important because they are the building blocks of rocks. All rocks are made of minerals. When you look at a rock and you see different colors in it, those colors are minerals. Okay? Without minerals, we could not have rocks. Scientists have so far identified over 4,000 different minerals. And they all look very different from each other. Some of them are beautiful. We call them gems. Some of them are just plain ugly and not very colorful. And during the next week or so, you're going to have a chance to investigate and learn about what gives minerals their properties. Many of you probably take a vitamin in the morning, and you probably know that your vitamins also contain minerals in them, such as magnesium, zinc, copper, chromium, molybdenum, nickel, even silicon, the same silicon that's used to make a computer chip you put into your body. This picture shows how many minerals the average US citizen will use in his or her life. And so some of these numbers are pretty astounding. For example, salt, the average US citizen will use 31,000 pounds of salt in his or her life. Now that includes salt that you put in your food, salt that you put on your driveway to melt the ice. Uh, if we look at coal, over 500,000 pounds of coal. So your electricity, your energy, uh, trains, things that we use to travel with use coal. Okay? Cement, almost 70,000 pounds of cement in your life. Now cement is not a mineral, but it has minerals in it. Petroleum, oil, zinc, clay, lead, Okay. So we really rely on these things and we use them a lot in our day-to-day -day lives. Some other uses of minerals include things like aluminum, which we use for packaging, transportation, for building things. Fluorescent lights that you might have in your house, they have beryllium in them. Uh, calcite is found in your toothpaste. Iron, used in buildings and magnets and cars. And if you look at the back page of your reference table, page 16, you have a chart that shows you minerals and some information about them. Let's start with this column on the right. These are the names of some minerals. And if we go a few columns over to the, over to the left, we see some of their uses. Okay. So halite, for example, is used as a food additive. It's used to melt ice also. Um, dolomite is used in stones that are used for building. Glass and ceramics have plagioclase feldspar and potassium feldspar in them. Okay. Electronics have quartz. So we have a list of minerals and among other things, we can find out what they are used for. Now to really understand minerals, we have to understand how they're created. So we're gonna do a little chemistry review. Okay. So you might remember from past years that the basic building block of all materials are atoms. Atoms have a few different parts to them. In the center is what we call the nucleus. And inside the nucleus, we have protons, which have a positive charge, and neutrons, which are neutral. They have no charge. All around the nucleus are the electrons which have a negative charge. So what will happen is atoms that are the same will join together to form the elements. Once you have an element, 
you have a basic unit of matter that cannot be broken down any further. Okay? So if we think of an element like hydrogen, you can't break hydrogen down into anything else. Okay? Many minerals are native elements, which means that they're made of only one element. And you're familiar with a lot of these. In fact, there are 92 native elements. And they include things like gold. Okay, so gold is an element, it's also a mineral. And because it only has one element in it, we say that it is a native element. Silver is another native element. Platinum, diamonds. Now, diamonds are interesting. We Obviously, we know that they're beautiful. We know they're very expensive. Diamonds are made entirely of carbon. The same thing that graphite is made out of. Graphite is what's inside your pencils. When you write, you're writing with graphite. Later in the week, we're going to learn about how it's possible for two minerals to be made of the same chemical, yet to be so completely different from each other. It's actually pretty interesting. Sulfur is a native element, as is copper. Okay? So they're all minerals that have one element. Now, other minerals are made of a combination of different elements. So the elements, if you think about the periodic table of elements, the elements can combine with each other to form what we call compounds. Quartz is an example of a compound. Quartz has one silicon atom and two oxygen atoms. Okay, the scientific name for quartz is silicon dioxide. And there's a picture of silicon. Pyrite is another mineral that's a compound. You probably know of pyrite, but you may know of it by its other name, which is fool's gold. So pyrite, or fool's gold, is a compound made of iron and sulfur atoms that are combined with each other. Hematite is another mineral that's a compound. It's made of iron and oxygen. Okay, so a compound has more than one element. If we go back to the reference table, there is a column over here that shows us the composition of minerals. And they use the chemical symbols. Not to worry, there is a key on the bottom. If you don't know the symbols, it tells you right down here. So let's say we wanted to know what fluorite was made of. Well, fluorite is CaF2. So Ca is calcium and the F is fluorine. Okay. So most of the minerals on this table are compounds. Most of them have more than one element in them. In fact, there are only two on here, sulfur and graphite, are the only two native elements that are listed on the chart. Now, we looked at this chart a few weeks ago when we were looking at the layers of the Earth, the spheres of the Earth, and we noticed that there are only about eight elements that make up most of the mass of the crust. Well, rocks and minerals are found in the crust. So these eight elements are also going to be the most common ones that are found in minerals. Which is why, when we go back to the reference table, they are only listing here about 15 different elements because those 15 elements are found in most minerals. So, final part of this video. How do we know if something is a mineral or if it's not? Well, to be a mineral, there are five requirements that must be met. The first one is that the object has to be naturally formed. It has to be formed by nature. If humans create it, it's not a mineral. So if we think about bricks or concrete, those are not minerals because humans make those objects. The second requirement to be a mineral, the object must be a solid at room temperature. So if we think about milk, now milk we know has calcium in it, and calcium is a mineral, but milk is not because it's not solid at room temperature. Blood, blood is not a mineral because it's not solid at room temperature. Third requirement, minerals are all inorganic which means they were never alive. So while a living thing might have minerals in them, parts of living things cannot be minerals, like bones. Bones, again, they have calcium in them, 
but bone itself is not a mineral because it's found in a living thing. The fourth requirement, minerals have a definite chemical composition. What that means is that no matter what color the mineral is, no matter how big or how small it is, it will always have the same chemical composition. For example, quartz. Quartz comes in many different colors. No matter what color it is, it will have this chemical formula. Okay, one atom of silicon, two atoms of oxygen. Silicon dioxide. Okay, no matter what color, no matter how big or small, that is the definite chemical composition of quartz. And then the fifth requirement is that all minerals have distinct crystalline structures. That basically means that a mineral always has the same crystal shape. So going back to quartz, quartz crystals are shaped like hexagons, always. It doesn't matter what color quartz it is, quartz is always shaped like a hexagon. Okay? So hopefully at this point, you have a better understanding of what objects are minerals and what objects are not minerals. Tomorrow in class, you're gonna look at some minerals, you're gonna start to identify their properties, and I think you're really gonna enjoy and have fun uh, testing the minerals and figuring out what they are based on their properties.